today I'm going to walk you through how to do a Hess's Law problem. Um, this is number two on the worksheet that you're being handed out. Um, this is the hardest one on there, so that you have an example of all of the po probable possible things that could happen in this question um, for you to figure out. Um, these things are notes that you'll want to write down at some point, but you have access to this video. It's linked on the agenda, so no need to scribble now. Better to listen and watch. Um, and as we're doing this question together, that's what you'll want to be doing on the worksheet that you have. Um, Hess's Law is, I think it's really fun. It's kind of like a puzzle. It feels tedious at first, especially because it's just a different way of finding delta H reaction. So what we learned last time with products minus reactants, this is a different way, way less efficient, um, a different way of finding the same information. Um, there are reasons why we do it this way rather than the other way. For now, I need you to learn both. Um, so it's a different way of finding delta H reaction. You'll always be given a whole boatload of information. So you're given what I call a goal reaction. That's just a name I kind of made up. Essentially, whatever reaction they give you that you're looking for the delta H reaction, the heat of reaction of, that's your goal. You'll also be given, sorry, all these other reactions and their heat of reactions. So that's why I printed out the class problems for you today. I printed out the homework because um, it's a lot to write down just to do one question. So this you're given. What we're going to do is take all of these given reactions and manipulate them in one way or another until we add them all up and what we're left with when we add them all up and things cancel out, we're left exactly with our goal reaction. That way, if we can add these up and know that we have that reaction, we can add their heats of reaction up and know we have the heat of reaction for that um, overall reaction. Um, We'll walk through this question together again. Um, and as we're going, I'm going to write some steps on this side. So I'm going to pause the video in a second to write those steps out um, or erase this. Um, but the one thing I do want you to know is our ways of manipulating. Okay, so when it comes time to manipulate these reactions, manipulate might mean leave it exactly as is. So leaving it as is might count. Or our options are to flip the reaction. Flipping meaning if I want the products and the reactants to switch sides, I would flip the whole reaction. When I do that, if I flip the reaction, I also flip the sign. I'll come back and show that again. But flip means change the sign of the delta H reaction, heat reaction. Also, instead of flipping, I can multiply or divide any of the coefficients within a reaction. So I can multiply or divide coefficients. If I multiply or divide coefficients, I would multiply or divide heat of reaction by the same number. Again, that'll make a little more sense once we actually get into this question. Okay, as we go through the question, I'm going to write out our steps and some tips and tricks as we go. These you probably do want to write down, um, and there probably isn't room on this paper. If you don't have time right now, that's okay. Again, you can access the video later. You can even pull it up on your phone if you forgot your headphones and listen and watch it silently. Our first step, I always step by I always start by choosing something for my goal reaction. So I'm going to choose something from the goal reaction. Meaning two aluminums or three Cl2 or two AlCl3. Eventually, I'm going to check all of these things, so my preference is to work from left to right. Um, when I choose something from that goal reaction, I am then going to find it in a given reaction. So let's say I picked the aluminums. In all of these reactions, the only place I have aluminum, and I mean aluminum as it's written here, not aluminum bonded to chlorine. The only place I have aluminum is there in that reaction. It doesn't appear anywhere else. So this reaction is the one I'm going to use to make sure I have the two aluminums where I want them in my goal. So I want two aluminums. I want them on the left side of the arrow. I have two aluminums. I have them on the left side of the arrow. I don't need to manipulate this reaction. What I need to do is leave it exactly as is. And I like to make a note of the fact that I'm leaving it as is. Because ultimately, I'm going to have to use all of these reactions. And you can't use them more than once. So I got the aluminums I need. Check. 
Um, I'm going to keep going through and do that for every single one. When I go to chlorine, I'm going to leave a space right here. There'll be a step we need to fill in. When I go to chlorine, we'll see, okay, I want three chlorines. I want them on the left of the arrow. No chlorine, no chlorine. There's chlorine. They're on the left of the arrow. So the manipulation I need to do here, I need to multiply this by three. If I multiply something in the reaction by three, I multiply everything by three, including the heat of reaction. So three, three, this two times three gets us six. And this I'm just gonna make a note to multiply it by three, I can do that later. That gives me the three chlorines when I want, so I'm good. Okay, when I move on to do ALCL3, I want two ALCL3s on the right, but, and this is what I wanted to add on step two, ALCL3 is here, and it's here, and it's there. This tells me a couple of things. Number one, if it's in multiple reactions, skip it until the end. So this is the end. I've already made everything else work, so now I do have to deal with the aluminum chloride. Um, in the other practice problems you're going to do, this is where you're going to mess up. That's going to be the first mistake you make. You'll have something, it'll appear in multiple reactions, and you'll try to fix it just from one of the reactions. Don't skip it. Sorry, don't. Do skip it. Um, if you've made everything work and you've used all your reactions, the one that you skip will magically work out. And I'll show you how to prove that to yourself. But there's, all, there's generally one that will magically work out, assuming everything else works. That isn't the case this time because I haven't used two of my reactions still. So I can't totally skip aluminum chloride, but it's at least the end now, so I am going to revisit it. Okay, so now that I'm looking at the ALCL3s, um, I realize that the one I have is, is, has an S next to it, meaning S for solid. S for solid, L for liquid, G for gas, AQ for aqueous. So if I look at all of the ALCL3s I have in my given reaction, some are aqueous, some are solid. The phase, solid, liquid, gas, aqueous, sometimes matters. And this is a case where it would. So now that I'm looking at my ALCL3s, I need to look at that phase. What I really want two solid aluminum chlorides on the right. That's my only solid aluminum chloride. I need to put it on the right. So I'm going to flip this reaction. ALCL3 aqueous is now on the left. ALCL3 solid is now on the right. Sorry, that was supposed to be an arrow. When I flip the reaction, I flip the sign. So it was negative, now it's positive. Now I have the solid aluminum chloride on the correct side, but I need two of them. So I'm also going to multiply everything in here by two, including multiplying my heat of reaction by two. That now gives me the aluminum chloride I need. So I never actually wrote that, but step three is to manipulate the reaction. We already said you can flip, in which case you change the positive or negative sign, and you can multiply or divide, in which case you do the same to the delta H reaction. If this reaction weren't here, the second one that I haven't touched, I'd be pretty confident I did it right. I wouldn't really need to check my work. I would add all of these heats of reactions up with their changes, and I'd be done. But even though I've accounted for all of these, the fact that I didn't use this reaction at all should be concerning. So what I'm about to show you is normally optional, but it's not optional in this case because I didn't use this reaction that was given. Um, so a way to check your work or something we have to do in this case since I didn't use this is I'm going to add up all my reactions, meaning adding up everything on the left that I used adding up everything on the right that I used. Not including this reaction circled in pink because I haven't used it and I'm not sure how or if I need to use it. So I'm going to do left side 
arrow right side or I'll run out of space because there's a lot we're adding together. Things on the left side. Two aluminum. I'm not going to write that it's solid because that's the only place I have aluminum, so the phase must not matter. HCl, on the other hand, here's one that's aqueous, here's the one that's gas. It probably does matter. So while I'm still adding up what's on my left-hand side, I'm going to keep the phase there just to be sure. Left side, left side. Skipping this because I'm not sure if I'm using it. Three H2s, three, L three Cl2s. And two AlCl3, aqueous. On the right-hand side, two AlCl3, aqueous. Sorry. Uh, right-hand side, three H2s. Six HCl gas. Two AlCl3 solid. So what I'm doing is I'm adding up. I'm going to combine like terms. So if there were things that were exactly the same on the same side, I could combine their coefficients. I can't do that here because solid and aqueous are different. Um, if there are things on opposite sides, I can subtract from one side to the other. Or if they're exactly, excuse me, exactly the same number, I can cancel out. So for instance, 3H2s, 3H2s. One on the left, one on the right. Same number, opposite sides. If this were math and they were like, 3x and 3x, subtract 3x from both sides. AlCl3 aqueous can cancel with AlCl3 aqueous, but not the solid one. So two of them, two of them, they cancel perfectly. If these reactions, the ones I just added together, if these were all I needed, when I was done with this canceling process, I should be left exactly with my goal. I don't see anything else that can cancel, but I'm stuck, left with some stuff that I don't want, that isn't part of my goal. I want these aluminums, those are good. I want these chlorines, those are good. I don't want those HCLs. I don't want these HCLs, I do want these AlCl3s. So some of you might still be wondering, those are on opposite sides, they're both 6HCl, why can't I cancel them? Well, aqueous, yes, different things I can't cancel. That's what this reaction must be there for. So I didn't use it at first because I wasn't sure how, but now I know that in order to make this look like my goal, I need six HCl aqueouses to go away. I need six HCl gases to go away. Those I can only get to go away if I get them to cancel. So I'm going to add this in. If I add the right number in the right spots, they'll cancel. This is the most confusing part. Um, if I want six HCl aqueouses to go away, I need six HCl aqueous on the other side, left and right, because then they can cancel. So to get that out of this, they're on the correct side, meaning the opposite side where I already have them, so that they'll cancel. I just need to multiply by six. When I Add that in here, it also gives me 6 HCl gas that I have to add to this side. This aqueous can now cancel with that aqueous. This gas can now cancel with that gas. So this reaction that looked like I didn't need it was actually there, so I could finish off this reaction. And now what I'm left with, 2Al plus 3Cl2 yields 2 aluminum chloride solid. That's my goal. That means if I added all these up, to make exactly that reaction. Some of the things were used and consumed along the way, but these add together to make that reaction. Their heats of reaction add together to make the heat of reaction for this. So in my calculator, okay, so negative 1049 plus six times negative 74.8 plus three times negative 1845 plus two times 323, add all of that up and I get negative 6,386.8 kJ per mole. That is my answer. This was the tedious step. You don't have to do this every time. You can always check your work.